Deep breath with me. on an imagination with a healing garden. I love that man of mine. <laughs> After I got done with, well, no, it was before I started my last video, I messaged him about not feeling well, and he and I were talking, and I just cried over Israel and Hamas and everything, the war, Ukraine. And... I said, I just, it hurts. I can feel it all and it hurts. And he sent me an article about how to not absorb the world's grief. And it triggered a memory, a good one. <laughs> and I said, I forgot. I built the healing garden because we would need a place to heal. I forgot. I was so busy building the garden that I completely forgot what it was for. I was so busy doing my research that I forgot why I was doing it. I'm not just looking for world peace. I'm looking to use it to end the war. So I'm not going to wait. I don't know why I was waiting. I I'm, don't know why I was waiting. So we're going to do this now. The healing garden was literally built as a shelter, as a mindset shelter, literally to basically provide haven and sanctuary during the war to provide anybody with the focus of manifestation, peace, and world peace during the war. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. I was just so busy doing the work and building it and getting it ready. Well, it's ready, and it's time to start. So I'm going to be doing meditations, classes on communication, and how to basically interact with other people connect with them and heal. I'm going to be probably be starting off every video with that introduction, explaining a brief history as to what the healing garden is for. It is literally a sanctuary, a mindset sanctuary during the war designed to get us to world peace. So we're going to start with some meditations. Deep breath in. And out. Now, I am holistic. That means two things. Deep breath in. The first thing it means is it is 100% natural. Aside from marijuana, psychedelics, it is 100% natural. There is no medication here. You do not need any prescription drugs for my work. Deep breath in. My tactics use philosophy, psychology, perspective, imagination, and physics, and sociology to bring together the mindset. Right now, we need community. We need community like what we saw during 9-11. That is what we need. We all have a shared pain, and that is exactly where we need to start, is the same pain the same sad and the same hurt. And then from there, we go into the next stage, which is the dream of world peace. Now, the problem that we all have is none of us are very good at communication. So I will be doing communication classes, deep breath in.
when we are hurt or scared, we have this iron armor that we put around our hearts and that closes us off our minds, it closes off our hearts. So basically it goes pain and then from the pain you have fear and then for self-protection because the communication didn't work because we didn't try the communication. We use a closed mind well we use a closed heart and that turns into a closed mind. And this causes more pain and more fear. So we have a closed heart, a closed mind, more pain, more fear, closed heart, closed mind, more pain, more fear, catch 22. We're going to break the cycle. To break the cycle, we are going to replace the closed heart with a boundary. Now, boundaries. Do not go around a person. They actually go around your bubble. You know how we all have personal bubbles? We talked about them back in the 80s very briefly, and then we stopped talking about the personal bubble. We need to go back to talking about the personal bubble again. Your personal bubble is supposed to have a boundary around it with about six inches of cushy zone so that if somebody does cross a boundary, they're not going to hit you, they're going to hit your space, your bubble. So you're supposed to have you, your private space, and then your boundary. Now, boundary is not a level of intimacy. It is not something you strip away as somebody gets closer. That is an intimacy circle of trust level. That is different. A boundary is actually a shield designed to prevent internalization. Internalization is pain. When we internalize, that transforms into pain. When other people project or another person is just authentic, it's supposed to hit our boundary, but instead we internalize it. When we internalize it, it creates pain. A boundary will stop that from being internalized. I'm going to be teaching you how. Basically, you need a certain set of emotions to prevent internalization. Emotions are the boundaries. The emotions that act as boundaries are the emotions confidence. It's the emotion, security, and it is the emotion, authority. When you use these three emotions, it creates a kind of energy field around you. It changes your mindset so that when somebody acts like themselves, is authentic, or projects, you don't internalize it. The internalization stops. To get confidence, security, and authority, you have to assert yourself. You have to assert your authority. You have to assert your voice. And you have to assert your identity. In order to do this, you need to use words to defend your authority, your voice, your identity, your assertiveness. Now, the person might argue. The person might become violent. And the person might gaslight you. The person might apologize. The person might ask for understanding so they can learn. And the person might ignore you and walk away. Now, in most cases, your words 
are going to create or get an apology, an understanding, an ignoring. They might get an argument because they're defensive. Very rarely will they get violent. Now, if they do get violent, the next course of action is to enforce the boundary by limiting access to you. To limit your access, this could mean no phone numbers, blocking somebody. It could mean reporting them. It could mean simply putting space between you. Running away. Running away is not a fear response. It is a defense boundary response. It might be moving out. Now, the flip side of all of this, the last stage, is very possibly change. If you defend and it turns to violence and you enforce, the next is going to have to be change. This is the third stage of anger. It's when you take something and you turn it into change because you've got to have change now. When you do this, you're going to have to look at moving, changing jobs. This is a possibility. It might have to be getting a restraining order. Consider, if you live with a person, getting a restraining order against them so you, and you can stay in the house. There's a lot of other possibilities, and honestly, at this point, we're going to have to work together. There is going to be If you are in a position at all to house someone temporarily to help them out, that's pretty much our only solution at this time. I have several projects underway to offer temporary housing or some court of some kind of a healing home to people. I don't have the funding for it yet. As soon as I do, that's something that I want to be putting together. For now, see if you have any friends who will be willing to help you with it. If you don't start talking about it, it doesn't change. Boundary setting is 100% dependent upon your communication skills. Now, the problem with communication skills is our voices. Our voices were taken away from us especially as children. Children should be seen and not hurt. As a result, there's a lot of people out there who grew up being punished for opening their mouth. When we are abused, we are actually charged with the concept of being a secret keeper. We are told that we have to hold the secrets of other people, and as a result, we don't say what needs to be said. That becomes the norm and the habit. We end up invalidating words. We end up not realizing their power. We end up saying a lot. Our words are one of the biggest problems with our culture, and it's time we start changing our words. Our words are the core of your mindset, because words, when used, create your belief, and that turns into your mindset. But if you're not familiar with the words you're using, if you're not mindful of the words you are using, you might be using words all day long that create a negative mindset that create a mindset that keeps you in a negative situation by changing the words you change the mindset you change the belief you create change the words have got to change words are highly powerful the problem is most people are afraid to use them most people don't know how to use them effectively most people in most cases will actually speak contradictions not realizing their contradictions they will say two different things, and as a result, they will create confusion for the people who receive it. And then, as a result, they'll come back and say something like, well, I said X, I don't know why this person is still pursuing me, or this person is still abusing me. Were you clear, or were you wishy-washy? This back and forth inconsistency is easily one of the hardest things to recognize in yourself and overcome. But... I have stuff that we're going to be, I'm going to be going over with you so we can start taking care of that. 
The best way to start getting used to talking is by practicing talking. Now, talking has two parts to it. You have your written word. Technically three parts, but with your written word, you have your improv and then you have your memorization. Either way, it's written down. The other is improvisation. Now, improvisation is directly linked to imagination. Public speaking has you write it down and then memorizing it. Acting has you write it down and then memorizing it. This is not effective. This is not the right way to go about doing this because improvisation is actually what you are looking to improve. It's not just talking, it is conversation improv. Most of us have absolutely no skill with this because we were abused. So we'll go in with rehearsed and scripted things to say or societal scripts to help us get through social situations. So even our societal scripts, what do you do for a living, is right there at the end of our tons because we've rehearsed it so many times. And that's the problem. We've rehearsed it so much that it's now habitual. It means nothing. It's empty. And that's why we are disconnected from each other. In order to correct this, you're going to need to improv conversation. Improvisation links up specifically to your imagination, and it allows you to speak fluent and freely. You will get better over time, but you've got to practice. Now, the way you practice is quite literally in front of the mirror, a podcast or a recording, a note recorder, like Evernote. Practice talking improv. The better you get at it, the easier it is. The easier it is, the more it flows. The more it flows, the more rhythmic you get, and it becomes music. Once you get down the improvisation, it will become a lot easier to then utilize that improv in everyday conversation, including setting your boundaries. This is the chorus to why most of us cannot set boundaries, is because it's improvisation under stress. It's that simple. So you have to overcome your high stress situation, most likely through a PTSD trigger, while you improv. That is what you are really trying to do when you set a boundary. Not easy, right? Not easy at all. It takes practice. Once you are aware of what you're actually dealing with, being able to tackle improvisation and boundary setting changes the game. So it starts again with improvisation and getting used to just improving the spoken language without written word and without memorization. And the second part of that is overcoming the stress and the PTSD while you are in the middle of a fawn or flop response. After a while, you'll be able to assert the boundary. Now, if you have an anger problem and or you are violent, you have the opposite problem. You are ready to assert, but your brain basically jumped over to defend yourself, which is fantastic. You're actually not in the fear response. You're in the defense. You're right where you need to be. You need to elevate that to speaking. Now, most people feel like it's not going to be heard. They invalidate the power of words. I'm going to be talking a lot about invalidating the power of words because invalidating, let me try it this way. When you give a boundary, the goal is not to intimidate the other person. The goal is to get you the emotions, confidence, security, and authority, which you don't experience unless and until you say the boundary. So the goal is to not literally get the person to hear, listen to you, or stop. The goal is to get you the three emotions that you need to stop internalizing. That's why you set boundaries. Because the goal is to get you to stop internalizing. To do that, you need to speak the words. So it's not enforcement that you're really looking to do. It is not about whether or not you're trying to use your word power to control other people. That's not what we're doing. We're not doing it for them. 
You are setting boundaries for you to give you three emotions that you need to stop internalizing. And those emotions are confidence, authority, and security. Also, self-esteem and 18 other emotions that are extraordinary when you start setting boundaries. You want those emotions. Those emotions that you get from setting boundaries become the shield. The boundaries and the words themselves are the medium to get the emotions you need to use as a shield. The only way you can get access to these emotions is by setting boundaries. The only way. It's when you verbally defend yourself that you gain access to the emotion confidence, self-esteem, authority. Now you won't internalize. You'll be fine. Once that starts happening, now, after you get those emotional defenses up, you will have the added benefit of being able to open your heart and open your mind to then connect with somebody you love on emotions like sadness and pain so that you can restore the one perspective, which is the dream that you guys want to build together. And then you won't be lonely anymore. It starts with learning how to communicate effectively and passing on the ability to say and improv and assert your words, which is really an assertion of your authority, which gives you confidence and authority and self-esteem. That is the correct combination with all of this. Most of my classes are going to be focused on this very specific thing. I'm going to be talking later about invalidating or in, to invalidate the power of words and how we invalidate the power of words. And it's shifting the attention and the focus from the words themselves to the purpose and the emotions that are generated when you use the power of these words. It has nothing to do with the words. It has to do with the emotions that are evoked when you use boundaries. And that's what's going to get you to where you need to get to start communicating, to start connecting with other people. Thank you so much for joining me. If you love shit like this, like, subscribe, follow below, comment. Let me know what part of the show resonated you. If you want to join in the discussion, I think I have a way. I'm not quite sure. I will figure this out. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to learn the tech. But go ahead, and if you are interested in joining my community, we do healing circles. I'm going to be doing authenticity circles. I'm wanting to do a safe space where we all can talk about basically the same pain, the same hurt, and then through that, uniting over that and building the dream of world peace, sharing what world peace looks like to you. That is going to be coming up later. Probably, if not this week, if not tomorrow, then definitely next week. So thank you so much, and may the kindest of words always find you.